in America, an alleged 564,000 people died over the last 30 years directly or indirectly by the use of a painkiller called OxyContin, through which the company, by the name of Purdue, earned 35 billion US dollars for killing mostly young Americans. And I will show you in this video how, as always, this is directly related to Switzerland, the Nazis and the Knights Templars, out of whom both the Nazis and Switzerland come out of the Knights Templars, as these Swiss elite bloodlines who do great businesses with the deaths of our children are everywhere on key positions as the top echelons of politics. They hide everything from us to make it very hard for us to find any valid death statistics concerning their lucrative business of death by these global death dealers. So here you see clean and beautiful Switzerland, neutral of course, with the Swiss Templars flag in the Templars colors, red and white. And here it says 564,000 dead Americans and the Swiss connection of the criminal Alpine Empire. So let's do a little calculation, shall we now? OxyContin was brought on the market in 1995 and they stopped producing it in 2018, which is roughly the very same time of the US occupation of Afghanistan from 2001 to 2021, because OxyContin is an opioid. And opioids need opium from Afghanistan. And as the good old Taliban had the opium trade and the opium production forbidden in 2001, and then again in 2021, it was a bit difficult to produce any opioids like OxyContin during those Taliban periods due to the scarcity of their basic ingredients from Afghanistan. It is therefore that the amount of OxyContin production years coincide with the amount of years of the US occupation of Afghanistan. So here you see how the US, they're pulling away the destroying Afghanistan from 2001 until 2021 which really coincides with the production years of here OxyContin by the Purdue Pharma industry from 1995 until 2018. Because this here, these pills need this country and the opium which is being produced in this country from here. So this here and the years is related to this here. 
And um, so don't you think this is a coincidence? Eh? The Afghan people have never done anything against the US population. They have never done anything against the Americans. But these ones here did so, murdering millions of Americans, probably. So the Afghan war has cost the lives of 564,000 Americans, but not exactly the way those media liars have told you. And once more, if the people in the US and the rest of the Western world would like to resolve the drugs problem, well, just import the Taliban, give them a US police uniform or the uniform of any other Western nation. Consequently, get rid of the entire corrupted Western Freemason police force and the Taliban dudes will solve the global drugs problem within 24 hours. I'll promise you that. And by the way, I'm not a Muslim. The CIA and the DEA only eliminate the competition, like South American drugs dealers, and they terminate the Taliban with those US Navy SEALs, because the Taliban have forbidden all drugs, while US killer cops only eliminate defenseless US citizens. So to the left, you see it says here US killer cops. Here you see one of those here. And to the right, it says Taliban drugs killers. Because the Taliban do not like drugs. These one here, and this whole organization, they protect the drugs and the big business that it gives to the elite. Oh, OxyContin was produced and on the market for 23 years, from 1995 to 2018. And it says that in 2008, there were in the US 14,800 deaths directly related and because of OxyContin. So in 20, instead of actual 23 years, and 15,000 instead of 14,800, because I'm a lazy calculator, that will give 20 times 15,000 is 300,000 directly related deaths because of OxyContin. And if I'd add the other three years to it, we'll get at 345,000 OxyContin deaths in the US alone. And these are only the directly related OxyContin deaths in the US. So here it says death dealer, OxyContin by Purdue Pharma, 23 years OxyContin. And you must be an oxymoron if you don't understand that an opioid like OxyContin is not 
add addictive because all opium based products are just plain addictive, meaning that the consequent OxyContin opioid addiction has lured millions of young people into serious drugs addiction, thus opening the back door for all kind of drugs like heroin, cocaine, crack, speed, amphetamines, ecstasy, the devastating fentanyl and whatnot. So here it says oxymoron, and there he is. This is what an oxymoron looks like, apparently. And on the other side, oxycontin, with a human being being trapped inside the pill. Like in the film, like in the movie. Here's the red pill, and here's the blue pill. <laughs> trapped in the pill. Really diabolic. And it's all protected by the state, the elite, and the ones in power. And they're based in the Alps, where all the money eventually goes to. I mean, OxyContin is to a drug addict what baby milk is to a newly born. And you must be an oxymoron if you don't understand this. Or maybe OxyContin makes oxymorons, right? So here's the comparison. This one here is milk addicted, which is a lot better. And this one here, it says here, killer, killer pharma, killer pharmaceuticals, attacks the brain. You know, it's, um, it's a war. And um, don't trust their poisons. Don't trust anything. You can trust me though. And the baby. So here is some information about the oxycontin. Here, it's uh, the old name is oxycodone. So here it says oxycodone sold under various brand names such as oxycodone and oxycontin. Well, it's the same, you know, what they do with all these military organizations with which they attack us you know they just change uniforms and change names before it was the ss now it is um and and it was hitler now it is putin and uh, the u.s navy seals and um you know they just change names all the time they just hide and this is the same with oxycontin which used to be uh, oxycodone, and it still exists, you know. So you can read it yourself here. Just punch pause as usual. But here's about the uh, side effects. Respiratory uh, depression nervousness abdominal pain uh why you name it you know everything you can imagine overdoses and here's some pharmacology oh, i go a bit quicker you know you could you can Oh, there it is. This is what I wanted to tell you under history. Yeah. And upon its release in 1995, what I told you until 2018. Um, and um, here, oxycodone is the most, or oxycontin is the most widely recreationally used opioid. It's for recreation, yeah? 
In the United States, more than 12 million people use opioid drugs recreationally. And uh, 11 million use oxycodone, so that's uh, oxycontin. So this is what I wanted to show you. And the opioids, um, in 2007, um, it's about the uh, 42,800 emergency calls because of the oxycontin. In 2008, the oxycontin was involved in 14,800 deaths. So over 23 years, you know, that makes 345,000 deaths in the US only uh, due to uh, oxycontin. And there are even numbers like 464,000 deaths since 2001, they say. So th this is just the tip of the iceberg. I, it's, it's a lot more because, you know, they hide it and, you know, you know how they do it, you know. So these are, these are just, a, and they have it in other countries here, Canada, United Kingdom. You know, it's, it's, it's everywhere, Germany, Hong Kong, Japan. You know, they try to hook like the whole world, uh, the, the youth of the entire globe on this poison. And it's all related to the Afghan war. Eh? So here's the chapter about the opioid epidemic. Uh, I mean, how is this possible, you know, with all these authorities, which what, what they have, you know, how, how can it go on and go on for 23 years and longer? Well, because it's all them, you know, they're in politics. They have all the big businesses. They are the elite. This is Pharaoh. Everything is them, the authorities, the politics, everything. You know, so this is why it's going on and it's going on. And here in the United States, from 1999, you know, that coincides with the Afghan war, which started in 2001, yeah, to 2016, it's estimated 453,300 Americans have died from opioid use. And most of them are related with this uh, oxycontin, which were, which they produce in the same air in the same era. You know, it coincides. You know, so and because this oxycontin, you can just have it by uh, through a prescription from your doctor. It's all legal. You know, he probably also a Freemason. And um, this has opened the door to further drugs abuse, you know. And um, so there was a cheap opioid drug, you know, even paid by the um, uh, by the uh, by the medical insurance, you know. <laughs> So by the medical insurance, all these opioids, uh, these uh, oxycontin, you know, if you get a prescription from your doctor, it got all paid out of the um, what what other people pay taxes for, and this is a heavy burden upon the uh, financially upon the whole tax system and the the whole uh, economics of of an entire country. Can you imagine? I mean, these people, the um, the Sackler family, who owns um, the um, Purdue Oxycontin factories, they made fifty three billion dollars. You know, with your tax money. You know that that's another part of the story about which nobody even talks about. Yeah. Can you imagine 53 billion tax money just gone? And so half a million Americans died. And what are they, 70 years old or 80 years old people? No, they're, they're like teenagers, you know, hardly 20 years old. The whole youth, you know, half a million kids died 
because of these Freemason authorities and politicians and uh, and their base in the Alps, you know, the whole pharaonic elite. Half a million kiddies died because of this. They just made it legal, you know. The, they made the, the opium trade uh, with the war in Afghanistan, they made it legal. And then selling it in the US and in uh, the whole world, they made it legal by, uh, you, know, you know, compress it into a pill, you know, the, op the opium. Just compress it into a pill. Then it looks like a medicine, right? Can you believe it? A medicine. You know, it's just heroin, com com you know, compressed in a pill. That's what it is. You just have a visit to your doctor and you can get it. You know? And this is what happened. This is just big, big, huge crime, genocide, population control. Freemasonry, Pharaoh, Pharistocracy, Switzerland, the whole thing is is in it, you know. They open up the whole the whole range of all their weapons against us altogether. The US two thousand and seven there were forty two thousand eight hundred oxycontin related emergency calls which makes a simplified lesser number of 40,000 times 20 for the 23 years is roughly 800,000 and probably when you count 10 to 23 years at least 1 million emergency calls for oxycontin over 23 years and which is supposed to be a harmless painkiller as the producing company Purdue claimed and had perpetrated such an aggressive publicity for. So you see, you know, when there are one million emergency calls, there hasn't been any protection at all from the authorities because they're all in it, you see. So here it says, OxyContin, one million emergency calls in 23 years from 1995 to 2018. And this is probably even higher you know i mean what's an emergency call i mean if you're in an emergency most people they can't even pick up the phone anymore and and make a phone call so this number is far much higher and the authorities did nothing they didn't do their work for which they're paid for you know they're just sucking up our tax money then the indirectly related deaths because of oxycontin as it is a drug that has functioned to open the door to drugs addiction which in 2021 in the US 106,000 people dying because of a drugs OD, which means a drugs overdose, simplifying 100,000 times 20 is 2 million potentially OxyContin related deaths over the 23 years of existence of oxycontin which is premeditated mass murder and of course all in the name of population control which has been proven so because the authority have done nothing to protect the population they're all freemasons they're all pharaohs it's the elite with their 
pharaonic bays in the Alps, and they wanted it. You know, they're all in it. So it's definitely population control. This is a genocide. I mean, two million. Oxycontin, it says, Oxycontin, two million deaths over 23 years. Yeah. It is population control. And this is the oxymoron. Or maybe just the evil ones behind the screens or behind the mask. And here comes the Knights Templar connection. Because apparently and statistically, the most Oxycontin related deaths happened in the US town of St. Bernard Parish in the state of Louisiana. And St. Bernard de Clairvaux was where the Knights Templars were founded in the middle of France next to the town of Troyes in that St. Bernard de Clairvaux Monastery of the Cistercian Order where I have been filming for you a couple of years back. And Louisiana has been named after the French king Louis XIV, also called the Sun King, the longest ruling monarch in history who ruled for 72 years. So, as soon as I see a huge crime committed and a whole chain of crimes being related to the Knights Templars, it goes click in my head. And I know this isn't a coincidence, but a perpetrated setup with an encoded message to the worldwide Freemason community on all key positions who derive out of the Knights Templars. You all remember my mafia videos about Sicily, in which I explain that the mafia comes out of the Knights Templars, who were the first multinationals in history for whom any business, moral or immoral, is okay, just as the mafia are drug dealers. There's a legal mafia like authorities, doctors, pharmaceutical companies producing Oxycontin and whatnot, and Freemasons, and there is the illegal mafia. The Swiss Templar dogs in the middle are called Saint Bernard dogs, used for saving people in a snow avalanche as a reference to the fact that the Cistercian Order of Saint Bernard, also called the Knights Templars, were saved from the French King through the escape into their safe haven, Switzerland. Therefore, the Templar name Saint Bernard for the Swiss Saviour dogs. You can see here Saint Bernard on the left hand side, his white Cistercian robe or cape. So it's no coincidence that Saint Bernard Parish became the epicenter of the Oxycontin pandemic. So here it says, uh, Satus Bernardus, it's all in Latin. And here you can see his white Cistercian robe with this hip hop uh, thing on it, you know, so you can hide under it. And here you see the monk with the two Saint Bernard dogs in the snow of Switzerland. And here's a Knights Templar. So here it says Oxycontin Drugs Mafia, Louisiana, Saint Bernard, 
perish. It's all related, people. They don't do this for nothing. When you see these Templar names pop up, well, you should know what's really behind it, because they always do this, people. So here in this thing called the National Drug Intelligence Center, Louisiana Drug Threat Assessment. Oh, this this is in 2001. Yeah. So, but anyway, already in 2001, when uh, OxyContin has o had only been on the market for six years, uh, they already talk about it here. And I'll show that to you. Here's all the other drugs, all the other goodies. Yeah, OxyContin, the powerful opiate, op opiate painkiller OxyContin is being abused throughout Louisiana, but it's particularly pro problematic in Louisiana's southeast parishes in St. Bernard Parish. There you go. The abuse of OxyContin known on the street as killers. So they call OxyContin, you know, a prescription painkiller by your doctor. They call it the killers. There you go. Has become so acute that the drug now rivals cocaine in its influence on crime and violence. Police, pharmacists, and substance abuse treatment centers in the area report that the problem is fueled in part by physicians who write prescriptions for the drug without performing proper screenings or examinations. So how come for the whole of Louisiana with big towns like New Orleans, they talk about St. Bernard Parish, eh? This little part. Eh? How come, eh? So, but, but they lie here. They, say they, they only talk that it said OxyContin, only five overdose deaths. Between October 2000 and January 2001. Okay, that might be correct, though. I mean, that's only, what is it? That's only three months. In three months' time, uh, 23 years ago, well, they already had five ODs in. Um, St. Bernard Paris. Okay, so that might be correct. And um, so, I mean, St. Bernard Parish, I mean, Knights Templars. So this is about St. Bernard Parish in Louisiana and Paroisse de Saint-Bernard. So a parish is a religious community, eh? just like um, a, a monastery is a parish by the Knights Templars. And here it says uh, the name Saint-Bernard, it comes from the patron saint of colonial governor Bernardo de Galvez, which is, of course, it's uh, nonsense, absolute nonsense. I mean, this is uh, Spanish, Bernardo de Calvez. Yeah, Spanish. And um, Louisiana was French. And there's only one saint. A governor is not a saint, you know. How can he be a saint? And the only saint Bernard that exists is uh, Saint Bernard de Clairvaux. The, um, the founder of the Knights Templars in his um, Cistercian monastery. And here's Louisiana. So apparently this is where the whole, where the epicenter of the, um, of this uh, drug related uh, Oxycontin uh, massacre where the epicenter is. Um, so there's only one saint in the whole of his Saint Bernard in the whole of history that is Saint Saint Bernard de Clairvaux, not some Spanish governor. You know, they try to hide it, you know, everywhere. And of course, because nowadays uh, there's only 35,000 persons living there. So 
five people OD'd because of OxyContin only in in three months. So that's quite a lot, you know. And uh, Saint Bernard Parish in Louisiana. Uh, just before, a couple of times I called the uh, OxyContin um, murderous uh, campaign or a pandemic, which is maybe wrong, but um, um, they also call it an epidemic. And apparently it says an epidemic is the, um, is the lesser pandemic and not as widespread like over frontiers. And in both an epidemic, apparently, and a pandemic, it should be an infectious disease. So I really don't know how to call it, but um, uh, here it says uh, a disease or condition is not a pandemic. Uh, it must also be infectious. For instance, cancer, cancer is responsible for ma many deaths, but is not considered a pandemic because the disease is not con contagious. So I'm sorry about that. So it's neither a, um, the OxyContin th thing, it's neither a pandemic nor a epidemic. So, so maybe someone can help me how to call it. <laughs> I don't know. So I'm sorry about that. Nearby St. Bernard Parish, there is the Knights Templar Commandery of St. Bernard de Clairvaux in New Orleans. And there is the Grand Commandery of Knights Templars of Louisiana. So they are there, all right. Here you can see that. The Commandery of St. Ber Bernard de Clairvaux of New Orleans was organized in April 1996. You see, this coincides again with OxyContin, which, which started to be produced uh, in 1995. You know, th this is not a coincidence, people. And here it says, the pri Priory of Saint Bernard de Clairvaux the Sovereign Military Order of the Temple of Jerusalem. And look here, in that coat of arms, you've got the crescent moon. Just as I've shown you in that village, you know, where there's a Templar's cross in Pfaffenheim, in Alsace, where there is this, um, uh, the crescent moon together with the Templar's cross in the, in the coat of arms of the town, which you can even see at the, at the, the, uh, the town council, you know, the crest. And this is because the Knights Templars, they had a, an alliance with the Muslims. They betrayed the European Crusaders. And here you see the red and white uh, checkerboard configuration of the Red House and the White House of Pharaoh, which are also the colors of the Knights Templars. And here it says, uh, Deus et Patria, God and the Fatherland. Yeah, sure, yeah. And uh, so here you can read the rest. And uh, well, I, I didn't even read it, you know, so. So there's a lot of members here. This one is a, a real aristocrat here. Con Chevalier Laurent Longer de la Guéronnière. So, it would be interesting maybe to look it up. Um, probably from an ancient Templar family. And uh, so they are there, you know. From the same time as the Oxycontin got produced, the, uh, the Priory of Saint Bernard de Clairvaux, the Knights Templars, are there and it's all related i mean they're, they're the biggest crook in history the riches on the planet and the mafia came out of them the freemasons came out of the knights templars the italian mafia there's n i haven't seen any other place in the world as sicily where there's so many knights templar commanderies 
and um, uh, Richard Leinhardt, he was there for a year. Richard Coeur de Lyon, he couldn't even speak English. And this is where, you know, the, uh, the biggest mafia guy, um, uh, you know, his name um, comes from Lionheart. Uh, Corleone. I mean, I've, I've shown you that in the video. It's all related, people. It's not a coincidence that uh, the uh, Saint Bernard Parish, that it is really the epicenter of this, well, I don't say the word anymore, of this killer wave. Let's put it that way. A killer wave it was. And there even too, here's the other Knights Templar Commandery of um, uh, Louisiana. It's probably also in, uh, in New Orleans. Well, it doesn't say really. It says the Grand Commandery of Knights Templars of Louisiana. And uh, so I think, yeah. They, they call themselves Christian Masons. <laughs> it's not possible. <laughs> yeah. Dedicated to improving our community through fraternity, charity, ritual. Yeah, rituals, yeah, blood rituals. And the heritage of the temp of Templary. Yeah, well. A lot of Knights Templars in uh, Louisiana. It's all related to um, Saint Bernard Parish and the other commandery starting at the same time as Oxycontin started out. It's, it's all related. Then the name of the Oxycontin Youth Killer Company is Purdue, which sounds exactly as the French perdu when pronounced by an English speaking person. Purdue and perdu with an E instead of a U means lost, which is also a reflection towards the Knights Templars who were lost on Friday the 13th, 1307, when they got arrested all over France. Don't you think the name Purdue is not related? Because these people in their orders and lodges know what they're doing with everything related to codes and numbers. So here is the French perdu, it means lost. And here the name of the company Purdue. And so it has a U here instead of an E. But if you pronounce this in English, you get Purdue. Here it says the Purdue Pharma LP, OxyContin. And this is in its feminine form, perdu, with an E. If it would be masculine, it would only perdu without the E. If the word before this one is masculine. And because a fraternity in French, la fraternité, it's feminine, which is kind of weird that a fraternity, that a brotherhood in French, it is feminine. There is a reason for this. I could explain that to you here, but it then it, it would get too long. It has a reason because it's kind of weird that a brotherhood is feminine. I, and, um, and all the brotherhoods, they all come out of the Knights Templars. So Purdue and together with all the Knights Templars and, and Saint Bernard Parish, and I mean, everything is pointing towards the Knights Templars, who became the biggest mafia and the biggest drug dealers in the world, with two million dead people in America because of these dudes here. 
and they founded Swaziland in the Alps, which is the, the biggest criminal base in the entire world. So don't you think that this name Purdue is related? Anybody who speaks French, when they hear Purdue, they think of an English speaking person that pronounces the French word for lost. So it's not a coincidence. I'm, I mean, everything is pointing with the sword. It's all pointing towards the Knights Templars and Freemasons and Mafia. And, that what it, and that's what it is. Eh? Or if you take their poison pills, you'll be lost, as in perdu, pronounced perdu by an English speaker, just like the company's name, Purdue. Coincidence? No, not really. So here it says, lost in your mind, which you can see here. You know. and lost in your mind with pills by Purdue. And here it says, perdu in French which gets pronounced Purdue, exactly like this here. And just don't think they didn't know this, eh? because this is what they did. I mean, look at those people who are, who are, you know, the drug addicts, what is it, in Kensington, in the US, taking fentanyl. Aren't they lost? Purdue, perdu, you know? They, they they even say it, you know, what, what they're going to do. They present it to us. They always do this, people. And now the family behind this premeditated mass murder or population control, as they call it. The Purdue Killer Company belongs to the Zeckler family who once anglified their German and Swiss German name by taking off the umlaut on the A, that is the two dots on the A, which makes an E sound from the A sound and not really needed in English because in English the name Sackler gets exactly pronounced the original German or Swiss German way with the two dots on it. So here you see a victim and here it says Zeckler. So this is the original version of the German or Swiss German name with the umlaut here on the A. So it says here Zeckler family and they are behind the Oxycontin. So Oxycontin is the, uh, the name of the, um, of the brand. Yeah, but the name of the product is actually Oxycodone. But there are several companies who make it under another name. So it says here Oxycodone addiction. I guess they're afraid of, you know, it's a very powerful dynasty, the Sackler dynasty. So they are afraid to use the name Oxycontin uh, in order not to get dragged and not to get sued in front of a um, in front of a judge. So by using the name Oxycodone, which was invented like uh, more than 100 years ago, you know, you're sort of quite on the safe side you know you know with the uh like the justice department uh considering that part yeah as many names do the name zekler describes an ancient medieval profession the zekler name comes from the german word zack S A C K, meaning a bag. So, Sackler, a person, a Sackler means a bag maker. 
and in this case, a body bag maker with at least 3 million body bags being made because of this Sackler family and their murderous products. So, quite appropriate, really. Sackler means the body bag maker. The Sackler family knew about the dangerosity of their OxyContin painkiller, or rather, patient killer. As OxyContin, as all opioids, makes dependent and creating drug addicts of millions of enslaved, addicted young Americans and people from elsewhere. And the Purdue Company and their secular body bag owners knew all about that, that it made addicted. So here you see all these pill bottles, like a cemetery, like a military cemetery. And it says oxycodone. Again, the same reason for not using oxycontin, because that's a brand and oxycodone is just a product. I mean, um, oxycontin is also oxycodone but not all oxycodone is oxycontin, if you see what I mean. Here it says uh, John Smith, it should say John Doe. And um, American flag, here you see all the pills with the flower. So here it says Swiss, German or German, and the profession and the name Sackler, it means a bag maker, as in body bags. You see, it needed a whole lot of body bags for the Sackler Purdue killer product. But for the Sackler family, the temptation was too big to stop, thus earning $35 billion with their deadly OxyContin product. I wouldn't be surprised if family members of the Sackler bloodline are in the body bag industry as well, as they perfectly well knew what their killer product would lead to ultimately yes death but as the saying goes one man's death is another man's bread and so generally applicable here in the secular case so you see a dead woman with a lot of pills and you see the white house with a lot of body bags and here it says secular 35 billion dollars the body bag family so here's about the Sackler family so originally with two dots on the a because it's german or swiss german and i'll read it for you here the Sackler family is an american family who founded and owed the pharmaceutical companies Purdue Pharma and Mundy Pharma. Purdue Pharma and some members of the family have faced lawsuits regarding overprescription of addictive pharmaceutical drugs, including OxyContin. Purdue Pharma has been criticized for its role in the opioid epidemic in the United States. Oh, so here they use the word epidemic, so not so bad after all. They have been described as the most evil family in America and the worst drug dealers in history. And so here you can read some more about it. The Sackler family, 
the body bag makers. And here about the profession Sackler and Beutler. So I'm sorry, it's only in German, but I'll translate it for you. So here it says that a Beutler, because in German, ein, ein Beutel, or that here, ein Beutelmacher, Beutel, it also means a bag. And Sack, from the word Sackler, it also mead, means a bag. bag. So the difference is between the Beutler, they use fine leather. Here it says, finest leather. It's almost the same word, eh? And the uh, Sackler here, they use um, like thick leather, you know, which is the, the difference between a uh, ein Feintechner and ein Techner, okay. Uh, the, the, here, this is the, uh, the profession of Zeckler here, um, it, it, it gets first mentioned in the 8th, in the 8th um, century. So that's from 700 to 800. Now that's in the, um, during the Merovingian times. And, you know, they were making bags out of uh, animal skins. Here it says, tier, it means a animal. And it was later on being replaced by uh, linen, linen, uh, like uh, cotton. And later on, they started uh, making um, beinkleid, like um, trousers out of leather, you know, like the famous uh, Bavarian um, leather pants. So for that, because it's quite thick leather, it needed a sackler to do this. So because already in the 800, and it was Napoleon who started um, in, the, um, in the 18th century after the French Revolution of 1789, he started um, giving or ordering people all over Europe um, to have a uh, to have a surname. Before Napoleon, people didn't have a surname, so and because there were guys, you know, who were having this profession of a bag maker, they gave themselves the name of uh, Sackler. And that's where it comes from. So it means a bag maker, eh? a body bag maker in this case here. So this here is about Arthur Sackler. And it says he, well, he lived um, from 1913 to 1987. He was also a, um, he was one of the three patriarchs of the controversial Sackler family pharmaceutical dynasty so there are dynasty you know the moment i hear the word dynasty you know i think of um, nobility so this is definitely nobility because um, normal people even even if you don't if you get rich which you won't you won't be able to keep it, you know, that they're gonna take it away of you if you're not part of the nobility. As uh, Sackler's reputation has been tarnished due to his company Purdue Pharma central role in the opioid crisis. So, And here about the. F there was something I wanted to show you. Um, I are here. Born in Brooklyn, and they are out of uh, the Jay Walker. Uh, they were Jay Walker grocers who came to New York from the Ukraine and Poland. So 
But I guess, you know, if they became a dynasty and they could keep the money and everything, their wealth, that they are part of the Jay Walker nobility. And if you're not part of any nobility, whether it's European nobility or Jay Walker nobility, you won't become a dynasty, you know, and you, you won't get that rich because they're going to take it off you. you know, using the... Um, the legal mafia like the authorities or the illegal mafia and they're going to take all you, you won't even get rich you know if you're not part of the nobility and i don't know how much these people how much these jaywalkers how much they have been mixed later on because um when they came to uh to brooklyn that's probably well, a long time ago you know so the Sackler body bag makers, the bag makers. So this is about the Purdue Pharmaceutical Industries. Purdue Pharma, formerly Purdue Frederick Company, is an American privately held pharmaceutical company founded, founded by John Purdue Gray. It was owned principality by members of the Sackler family as descendants of Mortimer and Raymond Sackler. In 2007, it paid out one of the largest fines ever uh, levied against a pharmaceutical firm for misleading the public about how addictive the drug OxyContin was compared to other pain medications. So we're going to look at their logo here. Uh, no, that doesn't work. Okay. So we see it's a circle here, and there's three quarter, uh, one quarter is missing. So that means there are three quarters left. So it says the concept of three, and altogether it's the concept of four. And then it looks like a, um, like a mirrored G to the other side, which is funny. And there is a horizontal red line. Well, actually, the red line should be vertical because the red house, they are the old world's order. And it is the, um, the horizontal rule is, the, uh, is, is actually white for the new world's order. But um, maybe they mean to say that the, um, that the old world's order, the old uh, nobility, that they are abiding by the rules of the Republic and the horizontal rule. And anyway, the, the three pharaonic colors are in it, red, white, and blue. And um, so here's some about the history. Purdue Pharma was founded by medical doctors John Purdue Gray in 1892. So... And then it changed, you know, when the when the settlers took it over. And later on, I'll show you where the settlers where they ran to, you know. And if they would have been really, you know, jaywalkers, and not, you know, they would have gone to the JJ bays. I explain on Brighton uh, what the JJ bays is. So, in these uh, last videos I made, because I have to find all coded words against the um, the censorship because i can't pronounce the name of the jaywalker base in the middle east so now you will know what i mean eh? the jj the jj uh, base one j is for jerusalem and the other j is for jaywalkers so uh, i guess you get it and they didn't run to there no <laughs> they ran to Switzerland. Eh? So these are important things, you know, um, instead of just following the, the usual, usual rumors and, you know, because these things go quite deep, you know, and you won't understand it, you know, with a, um, if you stay shallow and don't go into the history and don't follow, um, follow the money trail, like for instance.
and the money trail will always lead into Switzerland. So this is an interesting article connecting the settlers, Afghanistan and addiction, as I as I've explained to you just before. And uh, here we see a lion, which is the symbol, one of the symbols of the nobility. And um, this is the East India Company. You know, and in those days, the East India Company. They were like what Davos and the World Economic Forum is today. Funny enough, the Swiss German word for to run is Sekler, which is written in the same manner as the Sekler name, like S A with two dots. C K L E and guess where they ran to? Yes, <laughs> they ran to Pharaoh's bays in the Alps, taking all their accumulated wealth with them as well and put it in the Swiss banks. The settlers themselves went to Kstaat in Switzerland where the super rich crooks live, like Roman Polanski and the settlers who had in 2016 an estimated net worth of $16 billion being the 19th richest family in America. Well, their money went into the Swiss Nazi banks. Well, how is this possible? Why doesn't the all-powerful United States do anything against these crooks and protect the endangered youth of America? Well, <laughs> because they're all in it. And as I told you, Switzerland is neutral, not for you and me. No, we, the slaves, would get prosecuted, arrested by the Swiss Nazi police, thrown into the slammer indefinitely and extradited to the US. No. Switzerland is only neutral and the global safe haven for the aristocracy bloodlines and their money, and not at all for us. This has been agreed upon from the very beginning in 1291, when Switzerland got founded by the Knights Templars to make it Pharaoh's base in the Alps, where all Pharaonic bloodlines can find shelter, no matter what their crimes. Plus the fact that the settlers are most likely Swiss, considering the name, the Swiss German verb Sackler, meaning to run, their immediate choice to run back to Switzerland as things turned bad when Americans started to wake up about their vicious crimes, killing murderers, millions of young Americans. So here we can see lovely, neutral, clean, innocent Switzerland with their flag. And here it says, the Swiss German Alemannic Sekler means to run fast, like the Sekler dynasty ran fast to Switzerland. So Alemannic is being spoken, it's a dialect in Southern Germany, 
also a part of uh, northern Italy in um, in France, in eastern France, in Alsace, and in Vorarlberg in western Austria. It's been spoken in the buffer zone all around Switzerland. But the most Alemannic, pure Alemannic, you can find in Switzerland, which is the typical Swiss German. And they have different words, like the words Zekle, which is also sometimes written with an E. But most Swiss Germans, they would write it like this, with an A with the two dots on it. And with an E, it's pronounced exactly the same way as the A with the two dots. Because the two dots make out of the A, a E sound, an E sound. And um, so the A is uh, like in German, that would be A. And with the two dots on it, it's E, Sekle. Just like in English, that's why they could take the two dots away. Right? So this is where they run to. It's, it's in the word. It, they are the body makers, the body bag makers, the settlers. Um, the there is a Nazi link, which I'm going to tell you later on. Um, this is the neutral. This is the global neutral base for the elites, where they can hide all their money. It was a Knights nice Templar idea. So here you can see it. It's in German, but um, I'll translate it for you. I mean, it's quite obvious. It's, it even says jogger, jogging, you know, here. Sekle. So you can write it with an E or mostly with the A uh, umlaut. And rennen, it means to run. You see, it's almost the same word. So Sekle, it means Rennen to run. Here it is. And here is Berndeutsch, where I was, and um, I, sp I, I, I speak and understand Berndeutsch, Swiss German, and especially in Berndeutsch, what they speak in the capital, Bern, especially on the countryside where I was, they say Sekle, you know. The C indicates is being pronounced like Sekle. And it says here, rennen, it means to run. Like the Sackler family, they ran to Switzerland. I mean, is this a coincidence? No, it's not. And this is Alemannic here. It's also, Sackler is Alemannisch. Alemannic, like Swiss German is Alemannic, and around Switzerland they speak Alemannic. There was a tribe, the Alemannic tribe. Like the word for German in French is still. Allemand, because of this, they call him the Alemannic, because they were the first tribe that uh, collaborated with the Romans, the first German tribe, like the Saxons and and the the Angles, the Anglo Anglo Saxons, they never, at least in Germany, they never collaborated with the Romans. In England, they did actually. So, um, uh, no, that was afterwards, in England. The uh, Anglo-Saxons never collaborated with the um, with the Romans, and uh, so there were a lot of Alemannic soldiers in the Roman army. This is where the already two thousand years ago, when they murdered the um, the Gallic people all over France, which was the biggest genocide. So the Alemannic, uh, they are quite special. They always collaborated with the system which we can still see today with the, I say that in Swiss German now, um, van der Sackler familie uh, of de Schweizer Sackler uh, gang. It means that when the, um, in Swiss, in Berndeutsch, when the, uh, the, the Sackler family, when they, uh, when they sackled or ran to Switzerland, I mean, still collaborating with the Roman Empire, the Alemannic tribe. Now, again, once more, here it says in the internet, in Bern, the capital, they say Sekle for Rennen, to run, run back to Swaziland, Sekle family. And here it says, this is called the Alemannic uh, lexicon, 
or dictionary. It says here, schnell rennen, run, uh, rennen, it means to run, and schnell, it means fast. In uh, Südbadisch, so that's southern Germany, they say Sekle. Now they say Sekle, without the ch. That's only the Swiss Germans who do this. And it says, the Alemannic lexicon, and here they say, they, uh, they talk about Alsace in Eastern France, as I told you, and Schweiz, in, that means Switzerland, and here it says Alemannic. They all say uh, to run fast, uh, Sekle, and in Switzerland they pronounce it Sekle, like the Sekle family. So, as a proof for what I'm saying, so, so you believe it. So here it says, Sackler family accused of transferring money to Switzerland. And here you can see people in America, in Boston, they are protesting here. There it says, predators, Sackler family, dollar, Oxycontin, Purdue Pharma, it's like a wolf in uh, sheep clothes. And, um, well, you can find that there are more articles about it, but uh, I can't show them all to you. So, people are waking up, but, I mean, the government, the authorities are not doing anything, you know, against it. And here's some more of the article here. Uh, I'll let you read it yourself. Here they talk about one billion dollars. Um, um, here the family that owns OxyContin, Maker Purdue Pharma, used Swiss and other hidden accounts to transfer one billion to themselves. New York's Attorney General contends in court papers filed on Friday. So this is from 2019. Yeah. They don't talk enough about this, so I'll let you read it yourself here. Why? Because the authorities, the newspapers, they're all in it, you know, and they only talk about this low-intensity war in the Ukraine, you know. So here it says in blue, they point to 20 million shifted from a Purdue parent company to Sackler, who then redirected substantial amounts to shell companies that own family homes in Manhattan and the Hamptons, another 64 million in transfers to Sackler came from a previously unknown family trust using a Swiss account, prosecutors said in their filing. Well, this is only the tip of the iceberg. This is, so you read it yourself and uh... yeah, they talk about billions of dollars going to Switzerland. Uh, the Sacklers, here it says, the, the Sacklers had an estimated net worth of 13 billion as of 2016, making them America's 19th richest family, according to Forbes magazine. This is what I told you just before. This is big, big crime, and they're all in it. US government is in it, the Swiss, the banks, the newspapers. The military, the CIA, the FBI, they're all in it. Because the key positions, they're all occupied by the Octogon from the motherland in the Alps. And uh, they have a lot of children, you know. So they all need a nice Mercedes car, some a chunk of land with a nice villa on it, you know. Of course, these people, they don't work, you know. This is Pharaoh's nobility. The aristocracy, they don't work. They never did. They parasite on us, you know, but they are organized and they got the, uh, the good ideas, you know, so the people are not organized. They, they cannot organize among themselves, you know, so this is why we got the whole situation here. So it's all going to Switzerland, eh? always, because it's their neutral base for them only and not for you. As this American um, comic, as he said, it's a big club, club, and you ain't in it. So here it says in uh, in German, 
and this is from 2020 so that was during pharaoh's um pharaoh's bug war against us so this is why hardly anybody talked about it well one of the reasons and maybe it's also the reason that at the at that very moment pharaoh inserted that uh, global bug uh, to us you know everywhere to attack us so we don't talk about this anymore but this is big this is huge and uh, here it says the family it's in german so opioid morgen siedeln in die schweiz über die familie sackler zieht nach stadt so the opioid um, moguls they move over to switzerland they moved into switzerland and the sackler family they moved to stadt you know here it says again stadt in stadt we have um, all the rich crooks you know like uh, Roman Polanski, the child rapist, and uh, the very rich people like the uh, like the uh, the Egyptian father of the uh, of the boyfriend of Lady Diana. I forgot his name. Um, Al Fayed, I think. Yeah, Al Fayed. Um, it's it's full of these super rich people. Eh? So here it says here. Oxycontin. Uh, it says secular pain. Yeah, they give us a lot of pain, eh? Especially the parents of all the dead kiddies, all the body bags, eh? So, and there are two reasons, you know. You now we got the Ukraine war attraction, and there was the uh, Pharaoh's bug war distraction. Uh, so nobody talks about this and this is really a, a huge scandal it says the purdue farmer the lost farmer if you take these pills you're lost you're hooked on it and you're gonna die you're gonna be mixed up you're gonna be lost in your head just lost in your own head looking for yourself you know ending up in the streets like like in kensington not anymore knowing what you do just looking for yourself where, where am i where's my soul or where's my where am i you know what am i doing here this is what they do it's it's devilish it says dead what is it what does it say how many dead well there are millions of dead this is 2018 you know the media hardly talk about it. So here again, it says uh, the the New York Post is writing about it, and uh, that the the Sackler family went to Stad and how they're happy to receive friends there. And in Stad here, they immobilian that means real estate, so they own a lot of real estate already there. Uh, they're probably neighbors, you know, next door neighbors with uh, Roman Polanski. So like in the morning, like, hey, Roman, how are you? Oh, isn't Switzerland great? Oh, man, they helped us out. You know, those Americans, you know, we're so happy to left those Americans. Why well, we raped their children, you know, and we killed them by the millions. But, uh, you know, it's nice to be back in Switzerland, eh? So you won't read this here, like in American newspapers, that they went to Kstad in Switzerland, right? and how, how they're so happy there, you know. And this was from 2020 here, yeah? and they already talk about 400,000 dead because of OxyContin, yeah. But yeah, well, then again, they, uh, we had other distractions and other things uh, you know like pharaoh's bug war and all that so they went to kstadt yeah kstadt where jacqueline and mortimer exactly are they call her she calls herself the the mother theresa of stad the menuhin festival 
there's Jacqueline Sackler, you know, you know all these, you know, they're all Freemasons and, and philanthropists, you know, aren't they nice people, eh? It's like all these people having all these saints in history, like Saint Saint Bernard, he was a butcher. Saint Saint Bernard de Clairvaux of the Knights Templars, like in Saint Bernard Parish. You know, they these people are butchers. No saints at all. It's the same as as Obama having the uh, the Nobel Prize or Yasser Arafat or whatever kind of terrorists, you know. And this one is they call her the Mother Theresa. Wow. Well, it's, it's their newspapers in the first place, you know, who, who give all these names, eh? And um, yeah, they, she has a, uh, the Tate Gallery in London, the Guggenheim Museum in New York, the Louvre in Paris. They all got a lot of money from them. And um, I will show you why. I'll show you why. It is an irrefutable historical fact that OxyContin, under the original name of OxyCodon, was used by the Nazis in 1939 in a false flag operation which triggered World War II when they overdosed some Dachau concentration camp inmates with OxyContin during the Gleiwitz incident. And even Adolf Hitler also took OxyContin, as his doctor, Theodor Morel, said oxycontin in fact was invented in 1916 by two jaywalkers of whom one got murdered by the nazis in 1942 and from then on oxycontin became a nazi drug in the hands of the Nazis. So here it says Oxycontin and World War II Nazis 1939 Gleiwitz. So here you can see the radio tower, here it says, of Gleiwitz next to the Polish border, right? which was a false flag operation. The prisoners from Dachau, they were dressed in Polish uniforms, and you can see them here. And they were OD'd with this here, OxyContin. So this stuff here, this Nazi drug, has a long history. Eh? And then after this, the German invasion started a false flag operation, saying the Poles attacked the um, Germany because the Dachau concentration camp inmates, you can see them lying here from in those days, there were no jaywalkers here. They were all Germans, you know. A lot of left-wingers and communists just killed them. Put them in Polish uniforms. And then um, the, um, the invincible SS, they shot them to pieces. And the next day they said, okay, you know, this guy here, Mr. the Swiss sleeper agent, Mr. Hitler, he said, Ab heute wird zurückgeschossen! He said, from now on, we'll shoot back. Oh, there we go. You know, the Nazis, they were a bunch of liars. You know? The whole thing is a lie. Nazi Templars, they're all liars. And the whole of this, their base in the Alps, it's all based upon lies and lies and lies and lies and lies. <laughs> Which is the first weapon of Pharaoh. It's the first weapon of Pharaoh's aristocracy. You know, and we we are so stupid and believe their lies, their endless lies. Hey, Swizzy. After that, and the Gleivitz false flag incident, OxyContin was in the hands of the Nazis. 
and culminating into this most recent, recent OxyContin Nazi drug mass murder by a family with a Swiss German or German name. And as usual, all traces leading to Switzerland, where the money trail ends, just as it happens and happened after any mass murder and mass genocide, after which the money trail leads back to Switzerland and ends in Switzerland. So here we can see Naujox. I'll tell you more about this bloke here who was behind the, um, the Gleiwitz false flag operation or the Gleiwitz incident. And here it says OxyContin, Nazi drug. They just stole it, you know, until this very day. And the deception that led to nearly 100 million deaths. Um, this is probably the same guy, Naujox. And uh, here you can see the, um, the Gleiwitz uh, Eiffel Tower. And it's all related. You know, the Nazis won the war and Switzerland is their base. So I show you about the Gleiwitz incident here on the Oxycodon um, website. And it has very here again, it has various brand names such as Roxycodon, Oxycontin, etc. So the name of this of the the product is uh, Oxycodone. But as every time there's a new over the last well more than hundred years, there's a new company that brings this on the market every time they give it a new name. Maybe they give the pills a new form, a new color, whatever. And here are the roots of administration here by mouth, sublingual, intramuscular, intravenous, intranasal, subcutaneous, transdermal, rectal, epidural, etc. Well, it's really a nice candy for the average drug addict who understands each of these, um, each and single of these uh, words here, like intramuscular, intravenous, who are, that are like, for us, they're like alien words, but they are like um, daily language for the, uh, the average drug, uh, drugs addicts. So you can read it yourself, punch, pause. And um, what I wanted to show you here is about the history. You know. um, yeah. During Operation Himmler, uh, Skofedal, it's another name of it, was also reportedly injected in massive overdose into the prisoners dressed in Polish army uniforms in the staged incident on September the 1st, 1939, which opened the Second World War. So I'll show you the, um, and there's a lot more to read here, but I'm, I'm not going to show it every, everything. Yeah? Operation uh, Himmler, um, also Operation Conserva, that's a, a can, you know, with food, conserva. I don't know why. Consisted of a group of 1939 false flag undertakings planned by Nazi Germany to give the appearance of Polish aggression against Germany. The Germans then used propaganda reports of the events to justify the invasion of Poland, which started well, World, War, World War II. And here, uh, you can read here, the personal notes of Adolf Hitler's physician, Theodor Morel. There, there he is. Never had any problems after the war. Indicate Hitler received repeated injections of oikodal, oxycodone, and scofedal, 
as well as dolantin, uh, pethidine, codeine, and morphine less frequently. Oxycodone could not be obtained after late January 1945. Ah, interesting. Well, it, uh, they should say oxycodone could not be obtained in Germany after late January of 1945. Why? Well, because it all went into the United States. Yeah. The painkiller. This is also part of Operation Paperclip. Operation pa Paperclip, uh, that it, it talks not only about the people, you know, the academics and the scientists going to the US, but also their inventions and the Nazi inventions they stole from other people, like these two jaywalker inventors of the uh, oxycodone in 1916. And um, um, it says somewhere, uh, that it was invented uh, by those two uh, jaywalkers. And um, yeah, so here are the um, Martin Freund and Jacob Edmund Speyer of University of Frankfurt in Germany published the first uh, uh, synthesis of oxycodone from Thebane in 1916. When Freund, that means a friend, died in 1920, Speyer wrote his obituary for the German Chemical Society. Speyer, born to a jaywalker family in Frankfurt am Main, just like the Rothschild, in 1878, became a victim of the, um, I can't pronounce the word, the word, I had a code for it, but I can't remember it now. Um, he died on May 5th, 1942, the second day of the deportations from Lodz ghetto. His death was noted into the ghetto's chronicle. And together with all the jaywalker belongings and uh, their money and their, their Swiss bank accounts, Everything became property of the Nazis. I mean, the guy's dead, eh? So, uh, you, you, so they just took it. And um, yeah, so it became a Nazi drug, which is which is obvious, eh? So the jaywalkers had no more control over it. You know, it became a Nazi drug. They didn't even have control over their own lives. You know, so. So, uh, let's forget their money or their, their belongings, their inventions, you know, not even their own lives they could control anymore. And they, they wiped them out. And it became a Nazi drug. And then oh, I'll tell you the rest. So here is the Gleiwitz incident, and it's related to OxyContin. Can you believe it? So the Gleiwitz incident. Überfall auf den Sender Gleiwitz. Here is in Polish, Provokacja Gleiwitzka. I hope I pronounced that right. Eh? Uh, so the Gleiwitz incident was a false flag attack on the radio station uh, Zenda Gleiwitz in Gleiwitz, like Auschwitz, Gleiwitz, you know. Witz in German, it means a joke. So there are a lot, a lot of jokes going on, eh? Nazi jokes. I mean, it's a bit difficult to understand it. I suppose the Swiss understand them very well, the Nazi jokes. Then Germany and now Gliwice in Poland staged by Nazi Germany on the night of August 31st, 1939, along, along with some two dozen similar incidents. The attack was manufactured by German, Germany as a casus belli, a reason for the war to justify the invasion of Poland, well, etc., etc. <clears throat> so here the, there's the, uh, the Eiffel Tower of the Gleiwitz uh, broadcast. You can read, you can read the, uh, the rest uh, yourself. 
And oh yeah, here's the guy, Alfred. No Much of that is known about the Gleiwitz incident comes from the affidavit of SS Sturmbadenführer Alfred Naujox. At the Nuremberg trials, in his testimony, he stated that he organized the incident under orders from Reinhard Heydrich and Heinrich Müller, chief of the Gestapo. On the night of um, August 31st, a small group of German op operatives dressed in Polish uniforms and led by Naujok seized the Gleiwitz station and broadcast a short anti-German message in, Pol um, in Polish. The operation was named Großmutter gestorben. The grandmother died. Oh, that's weird, eh? The operation was to make the attack and the broadcast look like the work of Polish anti-German saboteurs. The operation was planned and carried out from the Slavietschitz Palace. Ah, oh, palace, okay. They're, of course they're in a palace. Yeah, it's always by the nobility. Oh, a huge palace. That's interesting, eh? That's an interesting palace. I wonder if it has some links to the Knights Templars. Well, anyway, here is Gleiwitz. Germany was like twice as big in those days. They shouldn't have done World War II, you know. They, they, uh, they, they could have kept a, a huge chunk of their country. So, and um, this is interesting here. Oskar Schindler, you know, the guy from Schindler's List, who's credited with later saving the lives of 1,200 jaywalkers during the <laughs> played, oh yeah, the, um, what was the name again for the uh, H word, the, um, uh, the hole catch. Yeah, they, they caught him uh, in, a, in a hole, the hole catch, because it also starts with an H. That was my code word played a role in, because if I pronounce this word here, and this one here, they take my video off by the machines who recognize it, and uh, then I'm being treated as a Nazi. And uh, yeah, so Oskar Schindler played a role in supplying the Polish uniforms and weapons used in the operation as an agent for the Abwehr. Oh. Nice. So Steven Spielberg, he didn't tell the whole story eh, about Oskar Schindler. Oh, there's betrayal, betrayal, betrayal. You know, everything is a lie. I mean, and I fear that, uh, you know, Steven Spielberg, I mean, very rich Hollywood. He's not a normal jaywalker, you know, this, this is typically jaywalker nobility. And um, as well as probably Oskar Schindler, maybe his name is Von Schindler, you know. You know they're all fairy tale tellers, you know. But it was a good film, I mean, very good film, there's, I mean, uh, there's truth in it, I mean, maybe and most likely to uh, to save himself oscar schindler he uh, he saved uh, a couple of jaywalkers here 1200 i mean these things happen and uh, apparently a lot of nazis and uh, even israeli people have told me this they went after the war they went to the jj bays right Even the jaywalkers themselves, they told me this. Eh? At the moment, nobody, a lot of people, jaywalkers in the JJ base, they don't trust their government anymore and they know it's a Nazi government. Of course, you know, what do you think in 1948? Do you really think that, you know, the, the British Empire just gave Palestine to those jaywalkers, you know? Mm. Who came out of the um, the whole catch like three hundred guys with pocket knives who 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 fought against seven Arab armies like and then even one. Anybody believes the whole fairy tale? Hey, eh? that the British Empire that just 
gave the, the, the Palestine just away to those daywalkers without keeping the control over it through the whole system of Freemasonry and, and Swiss banks and, and Islamofascism by um, François Genou and uh, the uncle of Yassir Arafat, Yass, uh, Yass, uh, Yassir uh, al uh, um, Oh, I forgot. I forgot his name. Um, the Mufti of Jerusalem. Hey, you really believe this? That they just gave it to? No, no. Yeah, you know, we're being we're being lied to, and also the Jaywalkers are being lied to. We're all being lied to. Uh, so Oscar Schindler, he did a couple of other things, eh? Which are not really in the film, you know. Why make a four-hour video, you know, and don't say this, you know? I mean, what's what's the what's the you what's the intention of it all? We have to question everything nowadays. Of course, the name of the um, the Mufti of Jerusalem was uh, Amin al Husseini, who was the uncle of Yasser Arafat. They're all bloodlines; they're all dynasties. Eh? Um, so here's the guy who triggered World War II with OxyContin. Alfred Naujox. So I'll let you read it yourself. Um, he was a Hauptsturmführer. And um, uh, this is interesting here about his later life here. Look. I'll read it for you. This is really shocking. At the Nuremberg trials, Naujox declared the attack against the Gleiwitz radio tower was under orders from Heinrich Müller, the head of Gestapo, and his superior, Reinhard Heydrich. After the war, he was not considered high-ranking enough to stand trial, but was called as a mere witness at the Nuremberg trials. Okay, here we got the guy who triggered World War II with 100 million deaths through OxyContin in a, a, a false flag attack. And he's considered not high ranking enough at the Nuremberg trials. Oh, come on. And in 1947, Now Yorks was extradited to Denmark to stay in trial. There he was found guilty of his role in the murder murders of Danish resistance fighters, oh, that as well, on top of that, and sentenced to 15 years in prison. However, in 1950, now York's sentence was reduced to four years, resulting in his immediate release in 1950. Following the trials, now York worked as a businessman in Hamburg, where he eventually sold his story to the media as the man who started the war. He's even proud of it, people. Look at that. He only went, he, he didn't go a day in, into prison for starting World War II and then even write a book about it, you know? The man who started the war, the man from Angola, what? He only went to, to prison for four, for four years because he killed some Danish people, you know? but not for starting World War II. He was alleged to have been involved in running Odessa. Oh, that as well. You know, Odessa, it's a harbor city in the Ukraine. I told you that, which is part of the, uh, the ethnic Swiss that went to live in the Ukraine in the, uh, what was it, the 18th century. Yeah. And so that's why they, they took the same road you know, through the Swiss mountains and Austria and uh, Czechoslovakia, or was it only Slovakia, Romania? Uh, the same road as the Knights Templars and the Swiss took like hundreds or maybe thousand years ago, the Knights Templars in this case. So the Nazis and the Nazi Templars, as they were, they took the same road as their predecessors, the, Na the Templars did. Um, like a um, thousand years before that, um, going and settle and uh, make, uh, construct uh, Templar commanderies in the Ukraine, as I already told you. So this is how the Odessa 
uh, the red line into the South America went to the town of Odessa. In Odessa, it means uh, Organisation der ehemalige SS Angehörigen. Together with Otto Skorzeny, who never had any problems either after the war, who handled contracts with the Spanish government, supplying passports and arranging for funds. And now York's NS associates handled former Nazi war criminals uh, going to Latin America, being responsible for their reception and protection there. Now York's died of a heart attack in Hamburg on April the 4th. 1966, age 54. You don't die naturally of a heart attack at 54, eh? So uh, my guess is the guy, you know, it got too hot. Um, like maybe the magazine, the Spiegel, wanted some answers and he just had to disappear. So they just declared him death. He disappeared as he already was in the, in the business of passports and arranging funds. It just started a new life somewhere. Right? That's, that's what they always do. Right? So we're being tricked, we're being lied, and the whole of history is a lie. And uh, the actual Oxycontin genocide is another Nazi genocide and connected to the Nazi Templars in their base in Switzerland and the Operation Paperclip. What better proof for the Operation Paperclip into the US and the Nazis winning World War II by observing OxyContin being the pharmaceutical agent leading to World War II with 100 million deaths. And now, 80 years later, from 1939 to nine, uh, 2019, again, the same Nazi drug OxyContin or OxyCodin being used for a genuine genocide on millions of Americans with just as after World War II, the crime, money, and the perpetrators going to Switzerland, their Nazi Templar base in the Alps. It's just business as usual. So here it says Operation Paperclip eventually led to OxyContin Nazi drug genocide. So with Operation Paperclip, not only the Nazi war criminals, you know, went to the Americas, but also their inventions and their know-how and their science, you know, like Werner von Braun, making the NASA and everything. And again, oxycodone is the, is the product name and oxycontin is the brand name. But oxycontin is, is in fact the Nazi drug, oxycodone. In spite of the fact that in 1916 it was invented by two jaywalkers, but the Nazis stole everything from the jaywalkers their lives included. So they are not to be blamed for this drug. If you see that oxycontin or oxycodone was invented by the jaywalkers, they have nothing to do with that. This genocide and the, this, what they did with this Nazi drug, because the Nazis stole everything of the jaywalkers and oxycontin became a Nazi drug, and now doing just another genocide. Americans, why do you need to save Ukraine and Russia when you can't even save yourselves and your children from these octagon Nazis on all key positions in your own country? Why? 
It says, here's the genocide with oxycodone or oxycontin. Oper and I read it for you. Operation Paperclip got the Nazi drug oxycodone into the US of A. Do you understand this? So act now. I just want to get back quickly to the Gleiwitz incident to explain something uh, which you shouldn't forget actually, what I already explained. So um, here in an oral testimony at the trials, Erwin von Lahausen, an aristocrat or pharaoh's aristocracy, stated that his division of the Abwehr, the Abwehr, that's the counterintelligence, was one, like, it's like FBI or the, the MI5. Um, the Abwehr was one of two that were given the task of providing Polish army uniforms, equipment, uh, equipment and identification cards. He was later told by Wilhelm Canaris, that was the head of the Abwehr, a admiral, that people from concentration camps had been disguised in these uniforms in order, and ordered to attack the radio station. Now, who is Erwin von Lahausen? What are all these aristocrats doing among the Nazis? Eh? So let's have a look. Okay, there he is. So General Major Erwin Heinrich René Lahausen von Vivremont Wow, that's a mouthful, eh? Vivremont, that's French, because that's where the whole nobility actually comes from. After they were in uh, Rome, and uh, before that they were in ancient Egypt. He was a high-ranking Abwehr official during the Second World War, as well as a member of the German resistance, and a key player in attempts to assassinate Adolf Hitler on March 13th, 1943, and well, the famous uh, July 20th, 1944, with uh, uh, Klaus von Stauffenberg. So, what I wanted to tell you, so how come all of a sudden, so a, a, this was a Nazi, and because he, he, he planned to assassinate Adolf Hitler, all of a sudden, they became all heroes in Germany and in the whole world. So how come they just change like this, you know? So here's the other one, Klaus von Stauffenberg, the famous one. Yeah. How come all these aristocrats, aristocrats, first they were with the Nazis, and then all of a sudden when the war was almost over, they were against the Nazis. It has been um, falsely presented in history that they saw Germany um, be demolished because of the Nazis and all of a sudden, you know, they became the good guys, you know. But no, 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 this is false. Which I explain in my film, The Nobility World Wars, on my channel, Gue. And here another one, Fab Fabian von Schlabrendorf, all aristocrats. The real reason is, as I explained to you, there were three parties, not only the good ones and the bad ones, the Nazis and the Allies, no. There was Switzerland, there was um, the aristocrat, uh, German aristocracy, and there was um, England and America, and let's say just the, um, the Order of the Garter if you want to understand it. And the Order of the Garter stands for England and America and the Allies, yeah. So it's still the same old war, you know. All the aristocrats in Germany, like this Klaus von Stauffenberg and this bloke here, the Erwin Lahauser general, you know, they wanted to have the, uh, the German emperor back at, on the throne, you know, the emperor um, Wilhelm II. 
And they thought they could use Adolf Hitler, who, to, who lied to them, you know, in order to get every, everybody, like, uh, in favor of uh, Nazism. And then, um, when all these aristocrats, when they um, discovered, you know, Hitler was betraying them, actually, um, because, as I told you, they are the Nazi Templars, right? And the Nazi Templars, they are the horizontal, um, democratic, uh, horizontal rule of the um, of the of the Republic. Whereas all the uh, all the aristocrats, they are for the feudal vertical rule. So this is the ancient war, you know. So Hitler, he got betrayed. Uh, Hitler betrayed them. And when it was too late, at the end of the war, they tried to, to kill Hitler, you know, so which is not really uh, a reason, you know, to present them as heroes all of a sudden, you know. They were just thinking of themselves and of their own, you know. So, and this is where we get to the point, actually, where Adolf Hitler, he betrayed the Germans, um, as he was actually working for the Order of the Garter as well, and the, Knight Temp the Knights Templar system or, uh, of the Swiss Na of the Swiss Octagon, he was also a, a Hitler was also in this case a British agent, and this is the reason why uh, um, Rudolf Hess, the second man in the empire, he he flew to um, what was it in 1941, I think. He flew to um, to Lord Hamilton in Scotland, another aristocrat with a castle and all that, um, in order to resolve uh, to stop the war. You know, because Rudolf Hess, and, the, and that's why we he after the war, the rest of his life, they kept Rudolf Hess in the dark. You know, he was not allowed to express himself because that would you know that would open the whole box you know the whole the whole conspiracy you know so actually octagon switzerland and their agent uh sleeper agent hitler worked together actually um they were part of the order of the garter um for the um in in which actually a monarchy becomes a constitutional monarchy and accepts the constitution of the knights templars the parliament and the horizontal rule and the german aristocracy did not want this and they didn't want either all the uh, the immigrants from uh, from africa and the muslim countries you know to uh, to come into germany and that's why, actually, it's quite complex, you know. So and you must understand this, you know. And this, so this guy, he was also involved into the Gleiwitz uh, incident. And this is why, actually, uh, Hitler and the Nazis, they had the British and the expeditionary expedition expeditionary force escape at Dunkirk whereas with the Stukas and everything they, they could have they could have killed them all I think it was a million men but it was not the aim that uh, um, Britain would and the, and the royal house and the order of the garter would lose the war it was not the aim at all and this is why uh, Hitler let the um, the expeditionary force escape at Dunkirk. Uh, as I told you, there are three parties, three part parties, and the best to see it this way: there is the Order of the Garter, which is a mixture of the horizontal. It's a compromise between the horizontal and the vertical rule. Then there is the vertical rule. In this case of the Second World War, it was the uh, the German aristocracy, and then there was the horizontal rule, uh, the Nazi Templars. So these three parties: horizontal, vertical, and a compromise, which is the order of the Garter. So here, 
in this uh, Now Yorks um, uh, website here. Later on November the 9th, uh, 1939, Now Jocks, along with Walter Schellenberg. Hey, where did we hear this name um, just recently? Okay. Bing, bing. Where did we hear this? He participated in the Venlo incident, which saw the capture in the Netherlands of two British SIS agents. Well, the SIS didn't exi exist in these days. It was the SOE, the uh, Special Operations Executive. So there was Captain Sigismund Payne Best and Major Richard Henry Stevens. And for this, he was personally awarded the Iron Cross by Hitler. They probably killed him, it doesn't say here. So, Walter Schellenberg. Now, let's have a look who is this guy here. Okay, there he is. Walter, Walter Schellenberg. And the name Schellenberg, so he was an SS Oberführer. I don't think that, that existed. It was Obergruppenführer. And Obergruppenführer, actually, that's a, uh, a general. And he was also in the um, in the Abwehr, the foreign intelligence, and all these sort of things. Yeah. So it doesn't say here, but Schellenberg or Schallenberg, it's also nobility. And where did we hear this recently with another one of their operations against humanity? You know, uh, connected to the bug war of Pharaoh. Oh, yes, there he is. You remember him? And Alexander Schallenberg. He has a real coat of arms. So he, um, it says, a member of the branch of the Austro Hungarian Schallenberg aristocratic family. And Schallenberg was born in 1969 in Bern, Switzerland, yeah, where his father Wolfgang was Austrian ambassador uh, to Switzerland. His mother is a native of Switzerland and the daughter of a Swiss banker <laughs> and president of UBS Alfred Sheva. Oh, Schallenberg was raised in India. Oh, he was all over. You know, this is typical nobility. And you see, he has a coat of arms, which I explained to you with the three things here for the uh, the three uh, helmets for the uh, the concept of three. And you remember, there he is with his blue tie for the war with all the sheep on it, right? the sheeple. So it means they are they are waging a war against us, the sheeple. Yeah. I mean, I mean, this guy was the chancellor, which is the president of Austria, a Swiss guy being the chancellor of Austria. And he um, ordered all the Austrians on uh, February the 1st, uh, 2022, to get Pharaoh's poison into their veins because of the bug war. And so a Swiss guy ordered all the Austrians. So I can you imagine? So maybe it also says here somewhere. I think it did. Uh, so you see, he was the uh, the chancellor uh, here in November two thousand and twenty-one. Schallenberg announced that uh, Pharaoh's um, um, a bug war poison would be mandatory in Austria from February two thousand and twenty-two. It became the first European country to mandate this vaccine. And this was because of um, uh, Clemens, the guy who wrote all the books, the, uh, the, uh, the doctor in biology, uh, who got murdered this year. And uh, so it's all the same family. It's all the same bloodlines. It's it's uh, it's always the Nazis with their drugs and their genocides. Now it's OxyContin. Then they murdered the Jaywalkers. 
then they come with a bug war now it's the ukraine war and oxycontin or oxycodone is a um, is a nazi drug they stole it from the jaywalkers it's a nazi drug and they use it for for their for their charming little genocides on humanity because of the population control the Sackler dynasty are so powerful that they even have a Sackler wing in New York's famous Metropolitan Museum. So here it says the Sackler wing with one Sackler here, one Sackler there, one Sackler here, the MD, MD, here Purdue Pharma Oxycontin. And what do they show in the Metropolitan's Sackler wing? <laughs> Pharaohs being, of course, another indication for this powerful Sackler dynasty being part of the pharistocracy, Pharaoh's worldwide nobility, showing the artifacts of the ancestors. So here it says, the secular wing with all these pharaonic temple here, with pharaonic statues. And here it says, secular gallery for Egyptian art, with another Egyptian artifact here. And here I wrote in it, secular pharistocracy. What more do you want for proofs here? This is far more than just an indication, right? And as if it wouldn't be enough for these pharaohs and eternal genociders of humanity, everywhere around the world where there are pyramids and museums with pharaonic artifacts, there is a secular wing like here at the Louvre Museum in Paris, and where Pharaoh Macronos II celebrated his presidential election in 2017 in front of the big Louvre pyramid, which represent the Cheops pyramid of their ancestors in ancient Egypt, with three little pyramids around it, of which one of them officially is the Pyramid of Mikrinos, also called Macronos. So here you can see the big Louvre pyramid. You can see how small the people are in comparison. And there are three pyramids around it. Here's one, and here in the corner is one, and there's one here. And one of these is officially called the Pyramid of Mikrinos. Just as there is a, a one in uh, Egypt next to the big Pyramid of Cheops. So th the little one, probably this one here maybe, is a rep representation of the the small Mikrinos pyramid after Pharaoh Mikrinos of, um, of ancient Egypt. And um, Pharaoh Macronos II of France, he was celebrating in one of these corners, probably here on this side, uh, in front of the Louvre pyramid, which represents the pyramid of Cheops. And somebody has counted it once, and all these glass parts, there are 666, apparently. I haven't counted it, but... Uh, okay, and here it says, take down the Sackler name. Because the Sackler name, everywhere where there are pharaonic artifacts in the world, in museums, there is a Sackler wing. And these are probably Frenchies, uh, who have taken up contact with the Americans and who put this here and take a nice picture in a video take down the secular name 
So this is slightly more than just a indi an indication that this the settlers they are real pharaohs. It's the pharaohistocracy, and therefore it says here pharaohistocracy in these nice letters, settler, written in the original German way with the umlaut, you know, with their base Switzerland, which I told you it's the base of pharaoh, with which they terrorize the world and through which they conquered uh, Europe and the white race. And here we got Elizabeth Sackler of the Sackler dynasty, who has an entire floor in the Brooklyn Museum of New York, specially made for feminist art. And what do feminists say? Yes. They want to kill the patriarchy, which they say openly. <laughs> well, they certainly saw to that with their OxyContin drugs and killing a huge chunk of the patriarchy as well. And look at this so called feminist art with this Auschwitz triangle of death which I filmed a few years back at a war memorial in France. It's called here, this one here, it's called the dinner party because these freaks feed on us with the inverse triangles of death and whatnot. Now here it says Brooklyn Museum, the Elizabeth Sackler Center for Feminist Art. Oh, isn't it charming? You know, we all know their, their sort of art, you know, they're always like transmitting messages, all these, all these art stuff, what I've been filming for you on roundabouts and, you know, and everywhere in towns and all this. And this thing here, I mean, what are they eating? It looks like organs here. Here's the all seeing eye, another triangle here. And just look carefully at this cornerstone here, together with the rest. This is exactly what I filmed at that war me memorial, you know, where there were graves, um, you know, of people who were sent to the concentration camps, um, French resistance fighters, most of it. And they had exactly the same thing. So don't you think there is a connection? Yeah, look at this cornerstone. I'll show it to you. And here you can read some more about it, the Elizabeth Sackler Center for Feminist Art. She has the whole fourth floor for this, you know. And what are feminists? Well, they're mostly, you know, they hate man. They, they openly say it, kill the patriarchy. I will show it again here. And... Um, they usually are, the feminists, they usually are uh, pink list killers. And just remember, I, as I told you, so many pink list killers were among the Nazis, you know, killing people in, and, and raping them in the concentration camps with this inverse pyramid, which you, or the inverse triangle or inverse pyramid, which you just saw in their art. And remember Jutta Rudiger, you know, she was the head of the German uh, Bund Deutscher Mädels, the Nazis, an, an enormous influence on the German population. And she was a pink list killer. People, this is all connected with the Nazis and genocides and inverted pyramids and pink list killers and this secular family population control, it's all connected in Switzerland. Can't you see it? So here it is. It was a war memorial with graves and people murdered in concentration camps. And it's the same, it's the same triangle. And, and look at the cornerstone. It's also, I, 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 I saw it there, you know, that it's in a different color, like, as you can see here, uh, 
as 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 in that sort of art thing it's it's the same you know and it's all about war population control depopulation world wars dynasties pharaoh this, this strange pharaonic culture with their sort of art it's always their art is always about triangles and and two pillars and you know so here's the um the title weird things on the road to ancient french templar commandery on my channel Gure. so here i made a um i i made a little comparison of the two exactly the same things here here, look here this is different here too you know so this is what happens you know first it's it's being showed it's being shown in a museum like here and then you know the freemasons of a town or a city they buy it and then it ends up like here you know it's a death cult and they're feeding on us i mean they got plates here with organs they're feeding on us you know with the inverse triangles like in Auschwitz and this is related to the war it's a war memorial where, where people got butchered in concentration camps you know like like the the genocide with the with the oxycontin pills you know it was it, it is a genocide uh, and it's a Nazi pill it's all related yeah look at it the moment I saw this it went click dang I I saw it in my mind you know which happens all the time, you know, when I see these symbols. Wakey, wakey, people. And here, they even say it openly now, you know, kill the patriarchy here in pink with, with this feminist symbol here. They say it openly. I mean, it's an appeal for violence, you know. Nobody does a thing. But if I talk about it, I get my video removed or, you know. And they are in politics now. And even many, if not most, in his government here of Pharaoh Macronos II, uh, many, and if not most, are pink list killers. I mean, we can see it happening. I will give you the names in the, in the next video. The names are there, you know. It's um, okay, but um, we are not allowed to think... Um, or not allowed to say that it is a conspiracy so i will not say that yeah because it's not allowed yeah so we don't say that no of course we don't eh? they just want to kill the patriarchy but you know here the feminists and these ones here you know and no no of course it's not a conspiracy of course not no no i didn't say it you didn't hear me say it so Leave me alone with all your laws and your censorship, okay? I did not say it. So I show it to you anyway. These five here are, are all ministers, you know, very important people who rule France. And they're all pink list killers. All these five, they openly admit it. And I guess, you know, if you look at Pharaoh Macronos II himself and remember the video I did about him, how he's been hugging naked Nubians all the time, walking hand in hand with known pink list killers. Um, I suspect that all the, the entire government are. I, I mean, look at the situation in France, you know, it's almost a, um, a civil war. And um, so just put one on one together, you know, you've got a whole bunch of pink list killers in the government and France is at the edge of a civil war. Is there a correlation? Is there? I'm not allowed to answer that for you because of the censorship. So I give you the names. These one openly admitted. Yeah. Uh, these five came out of the closet. So here is Gabriel Attal openly admitted they, they got their word for it which uh, you know I, I don't even want to say that when they admitted a, a minister i i don't remember what minister maybe i'll show it in the next video you know olivier dussopt the next one pink list killer a minister clement boone a pink list killer and a minister 
This one here, she's Moroccan, French Moroccan. Sarah El Hayri, a pink list killer. Oh, the, the Muslims will like that. And um, a minister, she's the minister of youth. Can you imagine? It reminds me of Jutta Rudiger, the pink list killer, the Nazi pink list killer, being at the head of the Bund Deutscher Medals, you know, the, uh, the organization of uh, German uh, girlies. Um, you know, they, they love to, to apparently to seek this uh, due to their sexual orientation to, um, to, to, to take a, a, um, a job, you know, which is next to children, apparently, like this one here and Jutta Rudiger. I mean, these are facts. It's not me saying this, yeah? And this one here, Frank Rista, another minister. He reminds me of that uh, priest that was uh, um, that was hitting himself on his back, you know, in the uh, the, the the film Da Vinci Code. Uh, it looks exactly like him. Eh? Gives me that creeps, really. So all five pink list killers, ministers, France is being ruled by pink list killers, and look at the situation. It's going to be a, a civil war, you know. It's, it's, we are on the edge of it now. So is there a relation? I cannot answer that for you. You'll answer that yourselves. So as we could see again in this secular OxyContin Purdue case, all these huge crimes and tragedies can always be traced back to Switzerland the Nazis, their Knights Templars, and their aristocracy, because Switzerland is the base of Pharaoh and their elite dynasty bloodlines who house the Nazi Templars in their octagon base in the Alps, the Swiss beast, home of the devil. The Swiss are the only people in the world that can murder millions of Americans without the FBI come knocking at their doors afterwards. And Switzerland is the only country in the world where the money they earned through the murder of millions of American OxyContin drug addicts can go to in all security without the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service, come knocking at their doors. Whereas any other country in the world that would have perpetrated such massive crimes against the American population would have been invaded by the all-powerful American army immediately. Like that backward third world country, Afghanistan, who never did anything against the American population except stopping the drugs trade and in fact helping the American population. Whereas the Swissies, their settlers and their Nazi banks get filthy rich through the murder on Americans, through the OxyContin drugs money. Now, all safely in a Swiss vault in Switzerland, the base of all evil. So here it says, Purdue American cartel with this concept of three and four in the pharaonic colors logo. Secklers are murderers. So here and you see devils here. The people are protesting in America. You should protest in front of the Swiss embassy or protest in Switzerland. 
that they will put you in prison for a long time if you would protest in Swaziland. Now, this is interesting. I think this is the Justice Department. Now, what do I see? I see a square, which is the concept of four, and I see a circle, which stands for the, the compass and the, the concept of three. So only here at the door of the Justice Department, it says uh, square and compass, Freemasonry. And uh, so here it says Staat, Swaziland. That's where they went to, people. So it looks very nice, you know, with a, a looking devil and a nice uh, a shield here showing it all and a skeleton all dressed up with uh, Oxycontin bottles. But the most important, you don't know, or you don't want to know, that they went to Staat in Swaziland. You know, and all the other Nazi connections, the uh, paperclip uh, or um, uh, connections uh, with the Nazi Templars and the Swiss banks. I mean, you have to go deeper into it, people. This is not deep enough, you know, like showing a little devil and a, and a nice uh, sign here. It's not enough. You must go deeper into it. Because you can protest, you know, do that for a few weeks, and then everybody forgets about it, as usual. Didn't work at all. There's no other country in the world that financed Hitler and the Nazis, then stole all the savings of the jaywalkers. A country that produced flamethrowers for the Russian genocide. A country that financed Operation Barbarossa with one billion Swiss francs that participated in making the Nazi atom bomb that got rich of slavery, used concentration camp inmates and after the war didn't get invited for the Nuremberg trials where in fact the Swissies should have been at the front row of the accused war criminals. There's no other country than Switzerland who are definitely behind the Ukraine war through the Swiss secrets or Swiss secret banking scandal. Four days before the Ukraine war. The country where Putin, Russian oligarchs and Russian mafia keep their money and own big villas and consequently won't even get mentioned with a single word by these NATO criminals and EU liars. Are you dumb to not see this? Can't you see we're being fooled about the huge criminal energy by this country and its people? Switzerland is the beast standing above all the laws, camouflaged under the veil of neutrality, clean and innocent looking. And I've given you all the proofs over the last 12 years. I was the only one in the world and in the entire human history that has revealed all this to you. And I fear now it has all been in vain because humanity are just dumb slaves and a bunch of cowards who will never unite and stand up against this evil operating out of the Alps. There never was any William Tell, as you can see here. It was all from a book by Friedrich von Schiller who was German and not even Swiss. They destroyed me and my family. 
because I opened up my mouth about it, which has cost me dearly. You just don't criticize Switzerland and the Swiss if you want to continue to live in peace, because they'll get you sooner or later if you do so. Be aware of the near future, for I have warned you, and yet you have done nothing. An apple a day keeps the Swiss away. A parody on the fake William Tell story in the wake of its false propaganda within the realm of political satire. An apple a day keeps the Swiss away.